It's a disgrace that somebody's allowed to write things like that. Uh, it could have been, you know, a lot of times the sources aren't sources that don't exist, and sometimes the sources are just people that are disgruntled former so-called employees. All right, so uh, the president said yesterday this Atlantic, uh, you know, magazine article on him in which he has claimed to have said that troops killed in combat are losers and suckers. It's just fake news. Never happened. He never said it. But the fallout has been swift here as he's been trying to uh, pound that message. Others have come back to say, well, we're, we're hearing otherwise. Uh, the bottom line is uh, there's a lot of confusion around this. Jennifer Griffin has been exploring this in great detail. She joins us right now. Jennifer. Hi, Neil. Um, my sources include two senior former Trump administration officials who were on the trip to France where these remarks allegedly were made. They confirmed key parts of the Atlantic article and certainly described a pattern of behavior by the president in describing war veterans and wounded warriors that coincides with the description in the Atlantic article. One of these former Trump administration officials told me when the president spoke about the Vietnam War, he always said it was a stupid war. Anyone who went was a sucker. According According to this source, the president would often say about American veterans, what's in it for them? They don't make any money. The source said it was a character flaw of the president. He could not understand why someone would die for their country. It was not worth it to him. Multiple sources say they heard the president say something similar at Arlington National Cemetery standing in front of General John Kelly's son Robert's grave. Regarding the trip to France and to the French cemetery to mark the end of World War I, according to my source, the president was not in a good mood that day. He was furious at the French president, Macron. He questioned why he had to go to two cemeteries. Why do I have to do two? He was planning to go to one cemetery on the first day and another one the second day. When asked if the president could have driven to Ain Marne Cemetery in what was described as a drizzle, the rain, the rain was a drizzle, this former official said, said, the president drives a lot. The other world leaders drove to the cemeteries. He just didn't want to go. Separately, during a White House planning session, after seeing the Bastille Day parade in France, President Trump did not want to include in the parade, according to this source who was in the meetings, quote, wounded guys. That's not a good look. Americans don't like that, according to this source who was present again at those meetings. Um, my source also said the president just hated John McCain. He always asked, why do you see him as a hero? Multiple sources confirmed the president did not want the flags lowered after McCain died, but others in the White House ordered them at half staff. There was a standoff. I remember it. I was covering it at the Pentagon at the time. Uh, the standoff ended and the president relented with regard to the flags that have staff. Neil? So, Jennifer, let me ask you, the, 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 the gist of the Atlantic article, um, you know, you could look at the comments he has made and said, and he's on the public record, that were quite disparaging uh, when John McCain was alive and shortly after he died, even back in 2015, when he claimed he couldn't admire someone who was captured, you know, uh, that, 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 that didn't make him a hero. So he did have a, a, a track record of, of, of speaking like this. But many of the president's supporters have come out, as you know, to say this sort of back and forth um, tied to these visits to, uh, you know, military graves, particularly German graves, uh, where he, he had termed the word visiting losers. It's not the context that, that, that the Atlantic article framed it or that maybe you just framed it. What do you say? Well, I circled back with my source this morning, and he firmly said this was not a one-off. He also said that uh, there was no plan to visit the German war dead. That was not, and that the president did not even know Germans were buried in that cemetery in Ain Marne. Um, he used, uh, according to my source, he used suckers and that term uh, repeatedly to describe McCain and anyone who went to Vietnam. Um, he always described, according to the source, Vietnam vets as those who couldn't get out of it. And he would often say to his advisors when they suggested that he would go to visit the war dead, what what is it about you guys and guys who get killed? So there was a, uh, he used losers, it, uh, that's a big part of the president's vernacular. I think anyone who's been around him knows that. Um, and again, 
uh, there are multiple instances within that article, multiple uh, issues, with, particularly with regards to the way he described wounded warriors in that meeting to plan the uh, July 4th parade that uh, once confirmed by people who were in the meeting, uh, really is pretty eye-raising because, you know, I've worked with wounded warriors for a long time in my role at the Pentagon, and um, it's just it's pretty shocking when you hear this kind of terminology used to describe them. You know, um, Jennifer, I'm not sure you're aware, but the president has been tweeting about you, um, saying that Jennifer Griffin should be fired for this kind of reporting, never even called us for a comment. Fox News is gone. What do you think of that? <laughs> well, first of all, um, I was in constant contact. John Roberts was working his sources at the White House. I was working my sources. And we teamed up, as you saw at the top of Brett Baer's show, and our reports were... Right. Straight down the middle, as always. You know, Neil, Deep Throat was an unnamed source. Um, it didn't make what he said untrue. My sources are not anonymous to me, and I doubt they are anonymous to the president. One of the arguments for those sources, and I certainly don't want you to expose them on air, and we only read a lot into his relative silence, is John Kelly, his former chief of staff. He has not said anything about this, but is it is it fair to say that these aren't just people who are around him? John Bolton made the comment that when, when they were in, in France, um, he was there with the president. None of this transpired or this language never transpired. But is it fair to say it could be other people around him more than, than John Bolton was at the time um, that, that, that there are more people talking about this than we know? I think it's plausible to think that the president might have had conversations that didn't involve, uh, you know, 10, 15 people. And so uh, you can um, imagine that um, not everyone was always involved in every conversation. But I can, I can tell you that my, my sources are unimpeachable. I feel very confident with what uh, we have reported at Fox. Um, not every line of the Atlantic article was, did I confirm, but I would say that um, most of the, the descriptions and the quotes in that Atlantic article, um, I did find people who were able to confirm. Um, and, and, and so, you know, I feel very confident in my reporting. Of course, you know, it's always better when people come on camera, but you can see how uh, people get destroyed when they get uh, crosswise with the president and on, uh, and they come out. And so people are reluctant. They've seen the, the way, uh, the, the language that used to describe people and the way, uh, it, you know, Twitter has been weaponized against them. And I think they just don't feel they need that kind of uh, grief right now. But what they're saying, they feel very strongly is accurate. They were there, and I'm a reporter, and it was my job to report what I heard. And Jennifer, you're a very good reporter. And then some, Jennifer Griffin, following a story here, uh, she's pretty scrupulous when it comes to, to making sure all the I's are dotted, all the T's are crossed. A little more after this.